So you found the model you want to print, you've placed it into your slicer of choice, dial in the settings and exported it to a G-code file to send to your printer. Wait, a what file? What on earth is a G-code file? You've probably wondered that a few times when you first started messing around with 3D printing and you probably have a general idea of what it is, but not what makes it tick. After putting a file into a slicer and then exporting it to a G-code file, that's usually where it ends for most users. And if you've ever opened up a G-code file out of curiosity, you probably closed it pretty quick, either being slightly intimidated by its complexity, scared you'll mess something up, or just out of plain disinterest. I want to spend this video giving you what I hope will be a better understanding of the contents of this file. The better you understand what's going on in there, the more prepared you'll be should you need to edit it or even troubleshoot it. I'll discuss the guts of the file in this video and then how to edit it in a separate one. So let's dig in. What is G-code? G-code is just a short name we give the G programming language, which is by far one of the most widely used numerical control programming languages out there. These languages consist of action commands and the values for those actions, which in turn are interpreted by a CPU and put into physical application. You see this code all the time in 3D printing, but you'll also see it in CNC applications, laser engraving and cutting, etc. Basically any computer controlled mechanical apparatus that requires an instruction set of commands and coordinates to operate. Since this video deals primarily with G-code as it pertains to 3D printing, we'll stick with that realm of code, more specifically the code for a Marlin based printer. So the commands will follow that logic. I'll be slicing with simplified 3D, so some things may differ from G-code files generated by other slicers. The codes will be the same, the structure and the details may not be. I'll try to point those out as we get to them. But before we begin, I think it's important to take a moment to explain the difference between relative positioning and absolute positioning, as we'll see this pop up all over our G-code. In 3D printing and other CNC applications, we're able to define how the tool head reacts to coordinate slash move commands. You either set the machine into absolute mode, which uses home as the basis of all movements, or you use relative mode to allow the axis to move using positive and negative commands or coordinates. Let me quickly demonstrate this. Let's say this is my tool head, which in 3D printing is the hot end. We issue a homing command at the beginning of each print that brings the tool head to the hardware minimums of each axis. This is mainly beneficial when the printer is in absolute mode, since now it knows where zero is. From here, if you issue a command to move on the x-axis 200, it goes to the 200 mark. And if you issue a command to bring it back to 50 on the x-axis, it goes back to 50, and that's 50 from home. It knows its absolute position on the axis. You won't really see any negative coordinates with absolute, because they're not needed. When you issue a command for a specific point on the axis, that's where the tool head goes. Now let's look at relative mode in contrast. Relative mode doesn't really care about home. In relative mode, the tool head is independent on all axes. When you issue a positive move command of 50, the tool head moves 50 units in one direction. To get it back to where it was, you would issue a move command of negative 50. You won't see relative mode used that often on X, Y, or Z, but you'll see it used on the extruder quite a bit. And we'll talk about that when we get into the G code. Real quick before we do, I recommend using a robust text editor like Notepad++ to view and edit G-code files. The features that it brings to the table is just going to make things so much easier when it comes time to viewing or editing. So with that, let's dive in and take a look at what an unedited, fresh from the slicer G-code file has to offer. I went ahead and I sliced the classic tree frog model in Simplify 3D, which I'll just call S3D from this point on. Right off the bat, we see some general information at the top here. This code was sliced using S3D version 3.0.0. That's handy to know when editing, which I'll talk about later. Under the slicer ID, we see some other usual info. You can come, you, you see like the date and the time. This can come in handy when you slice the same file multiple times. You can loosely keep track of versions this way. Below the time and the date, we reach the part of the code that can really vary from slicer to slicer. Here in S3D's G-code file, we get a whole lot of info. If you were unsure about what setting you use to slice a file, this is a good way to clarify things as most of the settings are listed here. Again, 
this is S3D's version, so not all slicers do this. Some will give you basic info, others no info at all. It really does depend on the slicer. You'll notice that all of these lines are commented out. So this is only for the benefit of the user and not the machine. Let's get down to where the machine starts picking up directions. Right there. So this is the machine's first command, G90 and M82. This sets the machine and the extruder to absolute positioning, which we discussed earlier. The next command is M106. This sets my part fan to zero via the S value at the end. This is a redundant command as you'll see down the line a little bit. Now we'll get into the initial heating commands. We see M140, S105. This is a command to heat the print bed to 105 degrees Celsius. You'll notice that a lot of commands use the S to set something. In this case, it's the temp target. Just below the S, or just remember that the S equals set, usually. Below that, you see an M190, S105, which is a command to wait until the bed temp reaches the target temp of S105 to proceed forward. We then see basically the same thing but for the extruder. So you see the T in this one. The T in the command is the target. So if you have multiple extruders you may see a T0 and a T1 here or separate lines one defining T0, one defining T1. Once the extruder reaches the target temp M109 requirements are met and we move on down. Next you'll see my startup script. These commands are usually defined in your slicer of choice and amended during g-code generation. My first startup command g21 sets the machine to read all values as metric when it comes to movement. I then shove in another g90 and an m82 to set absolute mode just in case the slicer's automated script didn't put it in yet. This harkens back to the old Cura days, but as you saw earlier, S3D throws them in there for me. Looking at this code from S3D, I know I can probably take these out of my start script and be fine, since S3D does put it in there for me. The M107 is the fan off command, so this is where the M106 S0 becomes redundant, but if I want to keep the M107 in, I can. It's just out of habit. Now here's where things start moving. I issue a G28, which homes all the accesses. After the G28 completes, I issue this custom command M42P7255. Um, basically the M42 command is a pin on command. And the pin 7 is actually for uh, what would be a second extruder. I, however, am using it to power LED lights and a fan, and that's where I kick this on. So after that, the G29 takes over, performing auto bed leveling and tram tramming, whichever you prefer to call it. After auto bed level completes, I move the Z-axis down 15. Remember, we're in absolute mode, so it moves to the 15 position from home. And that G1 is a move command. Oh, also that F value, and the travel speed. So you'll notice that there's an F parameter defined on most G1s. That dictates the feed rate, or more simply, the movement speed. You can define a number here in the code, or you can do what is done here and use brackets to pull the perimeter directly from the firmware. When you set up the firmware, you'll notice a spot where you can define your max travel speeds. When you use the brackets like this, it's saying use the default max travel speed for the z-axis that's in the firmware. So if you just want to go off your defaults in the firmware, use the brackets. If not, you can define a number. You'll find that the uh, slicer will also define numbers depending on speeds that you put into the slicer. Now here's a G92. I use the G92 command to zero out the extruder position. G92 is just a simple set position command. It tells the machine, hey, don't actually move, but pretend you're at X now. We mainly use this command on the extruder or via terminal when adjusting Z offsets during calibration. Now you'll see the G1 command again. G1 is the most used command in a G code file and it's the basic move command. You'll see pretty much nothing but G1 commands here in a second. In this case, I'm using G1 to extrude 8 millimeters of filament to prime my nozzle. After the prime, 
I zero out my extruder again. You'll see why in a second. And then this G1 here is kind of redundant set travel speeds to default. M117 is just a simple print command for the LCD if you have one. This just puts printing dot 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 on my display. And this can be customized. You can put whatever you want there as long as it's within the character limit of your LCD display. Here I zero out the extruder. And this actually is where my start code ends at the M117. So after that, this is all stuff that uh, Simplify 3D is appending for me automatically. So it zeroes out the extruder. Uh, see a movement here, G1, E negative 4.50. Now, you'll see that negative number on the extruder, but notice that we zeroed it out. We're still in absolute mode on the extruder, but here, that is my retraction value. I've got a Bowden setup, so it's pretty high. And that's my retraction move in millimeters per minute, not millimeters per second. Here and here, millimeters per minute. And that's my retraction value. So here you see it retracting. So I fed it eight earlier, and now it's retracting a little over half of that. So that's a prime and retract. That's just a little thing that I picked up from uh, doing printing for a while. I like to prime more than I retract and just get it ready to print a skirt. All right, so at this point, we'll start seeing the actual printing moves commands coordinates with the X and Y axis. You'll really only see the Z axis change at layer changes. But now that we're to the soup of the file, things get rather redundant with a whole bunch of G1 commands. All of this. Okay, the things I want to point out inside of the main body are the lines that are commented out, like these three. Again, the machine ignores these lines. So they are there for our benefit. We see layer markers, tool info, and uh, even here in S3D, we see a feature tag or feature marker. So we see that we're on layer one and what the layer height is in relative to the whole print. So it's not, I'm printing at a uh, layer height of 0.2 in this one, by the way. So it's saying that Z equals 0 0.18. That's because I'm sitting slightly lower than that for the initial layer. And then my tool info, you see that uh, I'm on H height is 0 0.200, width is 0 0.600, and that's because I have my first layer to set to extrude at 150%, which makes a nice flat first layer. And then you can see the feature tag here, letting me know that all of this is for the skirt. So. That's the nice thing about S3D as far as G-code is it does have that feature tagging. Not every slicer does that. Okay, now that we've gone through uh, the start codes and some of the actual printing codes, I want to move to the broader view of how Simplify 3D structures this particular G-code file. First, let's talk layers. Before each layer change, there is a comment designating the layer number and incremental layer height. This comes in real handy when you're wanting to put in custom commands in at a specific layer or height. I just need to know the naming convention being used. This one is pretty simple. Since it's semicolon, space, layer, space, and then the number. Now if I wanted to find a like layer 14, I just need to open up find in my text editor, usually hotkey to control F, and type in layer space 14. Find next. And there she be. After you hit find, you're there. If there wasn't a space between the semicolon and the layer, you would want to include the semicolon in the search as well. Knowing what layer you want to edit is the easiest way to get from A to B. But just in case you only know the height of the layer, you could search for that too using the same method. Second, I want to point out how S3D is handling the extruder here. You'll notice that before every new feature type, it uh, zeroes out that extruder and starts from zero. 
So instead of using relative mode or keeping an ongoing count on the extruder, it simply zeroes it out and starts from zero every time. It keeps things lean and clean. Not all slicers handle extruding this way. Some put the extruder into relative mode and just increase the numbers when extruding and decreasing the numbers when retracting. When S3D retracts, it still uses a negative number, but only after the extruder is zeroed. Then you'll notice the negative number equals your retraction setting value. Let's skip to the end of the file. Do, 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 do. You'll notice that these files are absolutely huge as far as the number of lines are in it. Okay. So here we see it, uh, G92, zeroing out my extruder. A G1E, negative 4.5. So this is its final retract. That's at the end of everything, just getting the filament out of the way. And you see layer end, so that's the end of that layer. That happens to be also the end of the print. So we see a M104S0, which is the same M104 command as the uh, beginning of the G-code file, but in this case it's issuing a zero, which turns off the bed, or this is the hot end, and then you see an M140S0 to turn off the bed. You see a G28X0 to home the x-axis, and if you wanted to home all the axes, you could just simply put G28 and home all of them. However, you now have something on the bed, so doing a G28 for all three axes is probably not the best idea as it'll probably cause your nozzle to crash into your print. So in this case, you can do a G28X0Y0, and that would give you uh, your X and your Y to the uh, home positions and get the thing all out of the way. But, you know, that's up to you if you want to do that. M84, that just simply disables the idle hold on all the motors. So at that point you can move things around manually. So if you didn't do a G28X0Y0, you could just simply move your heated nozzle out of the way, pull your bread forward or do whatever you want to there. Then you see an M117, again that's that LCD print command, and I just simply have it print complete on that. And that's, uh, again, something that you can define. So, you can put other things here if you want to. For example, if you have like a uh, Folger Tech FT5 which has the bed on the Z axis, you could put in a G1Z350 to lower the bed almost all the way down after the print is complete. This could aid in cooling or with removing the print. If you have a traditional Prusa with the bed on the y-axis, you could use a G1Y200 to move the bed all the way forward after the print completes. You get the idea. Just remember that you're still in absolute mode, so whatever number you put in the, in the end script here as the coordinate, it's direct coordinate, so 200 equals 200. You're not saying move 200 in one way, you're saying go to position 200, if that makes sense. So that's pretty much the guts of the G code. Like I said, you're going to see the G1 with X, Y, and extruder, that's what the E is, uh, coordinates and move commands all over the place. And that is what makes up the bulk of it. But I did want to go through and uh, clear up the start script and all the other little things in here. So, yeah. Okay, I know that was a lot to take in in such a short time, but I hope it gave you a better understanding of the mysterious G-code file. I'll be publishing an additional video shortly on how to actually edit those G-code files to add things like filament changes, pauses, etc., and even how to tweak settings on certain heights. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know when new tutorials hit my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button below. Happy printing, and I'll see you next time.